Okay. Hi, Erin. How are you? Nice to see you. Hi, Mandy. Hi, Nat. Hi, Erin. So today we're going to, we're going to speak to Erin Pertel, who is the um, founder of Honor Chiropractica in Gracia in Barcelona. And Erin uh, is an, a fellow Australian, which we're very excited about. Um, and Also my chiropractor for nearly 10 years. Yes, exactly. And we've invited Erin on today to have a chat with us because uh, she's going to talk to us about some interesting, uh, some interesting things that we probably don't even think about, the neurology of movement. So, uh, you know, we talk to people all the time about movement and we're working with, with, with your bodies. But this is coming from a different aspect and a different practice, which is really interesting for us. So we're going to, we're going to talk about that. But um, how are you going? Are you doing okay? I am. I'm doing really well, Mandy. I'm, um, I'm surviving this moment and going through the change and uh, with the illusion that it's like a caterpillar and we're going to come out like butterflies in the end, you know, but I'm definitely in my cocoon right now struggling. <laughs> That's know? so interesting. Why but, keep saying that we have to do a metamorphosis, you know? Yes, That's interesting. yes, yes, yes. So I'm in the cocoon. And uh, my vision is that I will come out as a beautiful butterfly, you know, but um, I'm sure we're still all in the process. Fly again. Mm -hmm. and, and you're a new mum as well. How, how, old, how old is Teddy, Teddy. Teddy now? Teddy's uh, 16 months old and he's an extremely active little boy. He uh, takes a lot of pleasure in trying to do like life-threatening things, you know, like um, he loves to try and stand up on the edge of a chair, you know, like, and think that that would be a really fun thing to do. We live on the first floor and he really likes pushing furniture up towards the balcony and we have to try and work out some way to okay, avoid no. his climbing abilities. But other than that, he's um, he just likes to stress us out. But he's really good. He, he's, he, really good. he's a daredevil. He, a bit, he I, is a daredevil. My brother's a bit of devil, daredevils as well. Yes, and I actually have a nephew who is exactly the same, but like exactly the same. So it's definitely the in the turtle blood. The, the time. Yes, it's definitely there. Yeah. So, but he is extremely healthy and he is extremely cute. And we, I am actually really pleased to have this moment of, uh, in his life. You know, I really have no other responsibilities right now except to feed and give him love. And oh, so that cool. is a blessing too. That's amazing. And so mm -hmm. your other baby would be Honor, um, yes. which is Honor Chiropractica. T tell us, how, how long ago did you set up Honor? Okay, well, I set it up. I set up on her about thirteen years ago now, and it's also gone through its process. I started with a very small practice, small space in in Gracia, and uh, started to build up my clients from there. And then I moved to a much bigger space in mm. Torrente Loya, and um, have been working in there for ten years now. Is it ten and years? then during that time, have you been uh, there ten years? Wow, that went mm. quick. Really? Like that. Yeah. Or nine. Yeah, like a long time. Yeah. It's nearly yeah. a decade. It'll probably be like that. It's true because it's true. That's amazing, Erin. Wow. Congratulations. That's, a, that's mm -hmm. an amazing achievement. Yeah. And so within that decade, of course, 10 billion trillion things happened. Um, I uh, bought another chiropractic practice in Badalona. And so I was running two practices for a while. Then I sold that practice. And then I had uh, my baby, Ted. And then when he was three months old, I decided it would be a really good idea to open a practice in Menorca. Of course it would. Um, <laughs> and so I opened a second practice in Menorca. And so in the last year, I've had the, the two practices and I fly out there every two weeks to adjust people out there. That's amazing. That's amazing. And what got you, what got you into chiropractic? Like, what did, like did, were you always passionate about it since you no. were young? No, no what, what I, uh, <laughs> it found me, thank God, and I'm extremely grateful for that. Uh, I definitely wanted to, to do something within the health field. I wanted to become a medical doctor and I studied really hard at high school to try and get good enough grades to get into medical school. And one fantastic thing that my mum told me to do was to go and talk to the local GP and do some work experience with him to see whether or not that was something that you would want to do. So I went, 
Good. Yeah. Australian Go mom. get a bit of work experience and decide after if you really like it. <laughs> well, it was fantastic advice because I went to meet the doctor and he told me that, um, do you like to, tr to have weekends off? And I was like, well, yeah. He goes, well, don't be a doctor. <laughs> do you like to uh, like have regular patterns? <laughs> and he told me all these things and I was like, that sounds like a terrible job, really. You know, like, I don't know if that's what I want to do. So I went to the local chiropractor. Uh, I had never been to a chiropractor before and, or anything like that. And by luck has it, the chiropractor was not there. He had a locum. And she was a young girl that had recently graduated from chiropractic college. And she was traveling around Australia doing locums at different chiropractic offices. And she said, if you want, I'll have a coffee with you and explain to you what it is. And she said, it's awesome. You travel, you can travel if you want. You can own your own business. No, you don't have to work on Fridays. You can make good money. You help people every day. I was like, yeah, 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 yeah. That, that, that's what I want. Yeah, yeah. And so I got into chiropractic college, which is, was extremely difficult at that time because they only allowed 25 people a year. And of those 25, only two could be graduates from high school. Oh, wow. And um, for some freak of nature chance, I got in. I had no idea what it was. I only knew that that was the thing you could <laughs> travel, <laughs> um, help people and um, didn't have to work long hours. So and that was Friday's my knowledge of chiropractic at the time. And have Fridays off. So I was like, you know, yeah, and I got in and that was, that was it. So I started it and thank God, because now I graduated in, in 2000. So it's now been 20 years working wow. as a chiropractor. And, and you studied in Melbourne, did you? Or did yes, you? I did. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I thought. That's what I thought. And mm -hmm. so have, you, have, have you been in Barcelona for that, all that time? Or did you go, did you do the traveling first and then find Barcelona? Mm -hmm. So I initially, I, uh, uh, started to work in Melbourne and I worked for two years in Melbourne as a chiropractor. Then I went to the UK and worked for approximately two years there. And it was in the UK that I met a Spanish man. And then from there, that brought me over here. Okay. Well, that, oh, actually, we knew you then. That was when we first met you. So that's, mm -hmm. how, when, so that's how long since we've known each other as well, because we've, we've known you all of that time. Yeah. It's amazing. That's really yeah. amazing. And, um, like you've been also fundamental in how chiropractors have developed in, in Spain. I know that because I, I, as, as being friends for such a long time, we've watched you really put a lot of effort into making this, um, this practice and this, this in, like part of this health industry here, making, giving it some substance and giving it some accreditation. And so you were, you're a president of the association for a little while as well, is that right? No, I wasn't the president of the association, but I was heavily involved in the Chiropractic Association. And I was one of the founders of what is now currently the Barcelona Chiropractic College. Okay. Um, that is the right. university course that you can study to be a chiropractor here in Barcelona. And um, it was an extremely important move we wanted to get chiropractic recognized here as a medical profession and so in order to do that we had to join together as a team so that's why we created the association and then from that we had to get more chiropractors working here in Spain because at that time when we first began we were about 80 chiropractors in the whole of Spain you know and so then uh, we started an educational uh, system so the, the university course and currently, the, the school has been now running for, I think, seven years, seven or eight years now. And it's graduating in about 50 chiropractors a year. There is also a school now in Madrid. So we've got two schools here in Spain. So currently, we have more chiropractic students in, chiro in Spain than we do chiropractors, you know. So this will create a massive shift. And when we're a bigger group, we can definitely have more legal pool to become accredited here in Spain. Well, I, I think I'm really, I really admire that because... We were talking to Nat's sister um, and and uh, last week as an interview, and, and I heard she, that. Mm. Yeah, and she was, you know, she was saying that when she uh, started in in Pilates, you had to be invited in mm -hmm. to actually be part of part of the community, and and you couldn't just you had to you had to do an interview and you had to get in, and and I think that's one of the things that I mean in Australia, we're we're pretty much. Uh, au fait with accreditation there. We're, I mean, probably to the extreme where we're a bit over over um, zealous with how we accredit everything. But um, mm -hmm. 
you know, I think that something in Spain, it, like being a being a foundation member of something like that in here, is is is, is a credit to you. It's amazing. Well done. Well, it's a, it's something as in, I in, I imagine the same with Pilates. In order to be a Pilates instructor, it is a talent and a, it's a, a a process of learning that you have to go through. And you have to recognize the people that are going to do that. They have to be recognized for what they've done. It's, and yeah. if somebody is going to do a weekend course, they can be recognized for that too, but they just can't use that word Pilates instructor or chiropractor, for example. Yeah. And yeah. we just found that uh, at least for chiropractic anyway, in the majority of uh, Western countries, chiropractic is a recognized medical profession with yeah. its own title and accreditation. And here in Spain, that doesn't exist. Why? Mm, who knows, you know? But yeah, that, well, the, that only, the, only, to get that. the only practice that is by is physiotherapists. Yes. So, you know, so it's, it's, it's been a challenge for us as well. To, well, I suppose it's the same as you, to educate the the our clients and educate the community about what it is that we bring to them as health practitioners you know what, what how mm -hmm. what how important it is so yeah. no well good on you girl well yeah <laughs> i suppose so <laughs> you know um something that i am doing to try and help as well uh, during this crisis period i have uh, been putting together webinars for chiropractors and inviting uh, top chiropractors from around the world to get together to do very small webinars together and we've had amazing success from that and actually next week I'm going to organize one for my clients or for anybody who's interested as well but looking at with a different perspective at, at health you know we're in a health crisis but I really want to start to have to open up a conversation as health from another point of view. Well, mm -hmm. please, please send us that and we'll put it up on, on the, on the group so that people can actually, if they want to join you, they can actually come. Sure. And it's going to be on Wednesday, the 15th of April at seven o'clock in the afternoon. Perfect. So I'll put it, I'll send you the yeah. link in the group. That'd be amazing. And so today mm -hmm. you're going to talk to us about neurology of, of, of movement. Tell us, tell me a little bit about that. Okay. Well, how long have we got, Mandy? If I uh, uh, what do we have here? Um, doesn't tell us how long we've been on. No. So probably ten minutes. Okay. Uh, if you want, I made a very quick PowerPoint presentation just to go through this idea. But the objective of what I wanted to explain is that people understand the why. Like, why do they go to Pilates? Why do they go to the chiropractor? You know, like, of course we do it because we want to feel good, we want to get out of pain, but actually there is a function that is happening in our body on a day-to-day -day basis when we do these sorts of things, mm -hmm. you know? And it is the brain that controls our body. So when I say the neurology of movement, I'm talking about what is happening on a neurological level when we move the body, right? So we move the body when we do Pilates or any form of exercise, but also as a chiropractor or a physio or an osteopath, I'm going to use the word chiropractor because I am a chiropractor but any form of treatment to any joint in the body when we're going to look for a blockage or a loss of movement in a joint we're going to restore that movement on a joint level you know so there is that importance between the movement of the joint level and the movement of the body as a whole so it's that there's so many therapies that are completely intertwined helping yeah. with the neurology of yeah. What's yeah, happening in our body. The word that just came straight into my mind was synergy. You know, there's synergy. A, you know, that's what it is, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Perfect. Well, you take it away. I'm All right. Excited. So I've got a little. Um, I'm like it's almost inside the screen. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. Can you guys see that there? Yes. Yes. Great. Okay. So the the title of my talk is neurology. As you can see, the name of my practice is on a chiropractica. And let's see. Let's move to the next page. Can we? Yeah. So first of all, what do we have? We have the nervous system. Okay. So our nervous system consists of three different things. I'm just going to give you at the very beginning, a brief introduction into what is neurology and anatomy so that you're up to date with where I'm going. Okay. So just try and stick with me that we will get to the point. So what is our nervous system? We have the brain, we have the spinal cord, and then we have the nerves that come out from the spinal cord. Okay. And what is the function of our nervous system? Okay, our nervous system basically helps us protect and adapt. So what does that mean? It means that protect. So 
if you know i put the dog there because it's a perf dogs are a perfect example of what is our nervous system where we have what we call the sympathetic and the parasympathetic nervous nervous system this is our fight or flight system so it protects us in the way that we feel any danger that comes to us our nervous system is going to take in that information and it's going to react it's going to give our body an order or something to move and react to that you know and adapt in the way that depending for example like with homeostasis it's cold outside you walk outside your nervous system is going to get that information from the receptors on your skin it's going to determine what the temperature is and your body is going to adapt to the situation or the environment that you're in yeah, yeah. so the nervous system works through receptors we have receptors throughout our body so we have receptors like i said on our skin in our mouth in our digestive system we also have receptors which are really important in the world of chiropractic and movement they're called mechanoreceptors and these receptors we find them in every little joint in our body okay this information that comes from every joint we can tell what movement is happening there what is the tone of the muscles around that joint and if there's any damage happening in that joint okay and I just wanted to put this little quote here that our bodies have an amazing ability to adjust to even the most, to the most terrible conditions, I wanted to say. So even like right now, we are in a moment of stress, but our body is capable of adapting to that. You know, our mind is capable of adapting to that. So these mechanoreceptors, okay, because this is the, what's most important in, in my world. What the mechanical receptors are going to do is detect a lack of motion in the joints. When this motion is not moving anymore, it will send a message to the, to the spinal cord to say, hey, this isn't working anymore. What the spinal cord will do is send a message back to the board, back to the joint and say, don't worry, I've got my friends, the muscles just next door, and they're going to contract to help you. Because if you can't move, they'll do the support system for you, right? The problem is that if this happens only at one joint, the body doesn't notice it. If it happens at two joints, three joints, four joints, five joints, the body still doesn't tell the brain that there's a problem going on there. But you might have several spots in the spine that are not moving, or not only in the spine, this could be in the knee, in the wrist, in the ankle, wherever, finally. but I'm gonna say spine because that's what I work with, right? When we have several spots in the spine that aren't moving and several muscle contractions in the spine, this is gonna create a lot of lo loss of stability and uh, strength in the spine, okay? Then what happens is you get the larger muscle groups that also have to come into action, okay? I, I put a little note here saying that 95% of the messages do not reach the brain and the body does not feel pain, okay? I want you to keep that information aside because it, it's going to help at the end of the talk so what causes these blockages in the joints okay we determine it under stress is the major thing but stress within the stress there's two types of stress there's a structural stress and a neurological stress a structural stress is usually from some sort of posture trauma or repetitive movements okay so like the photo says here your typical posture at the computer your twisted ankle any form of trauma or structural change within the body. The neurological stress, it, it could come from some form of a brain trauma. So when we see people, stroke victims or have anything, we see the damage is in the brain, but you'll see it in the body because they take on a certain posture or people who have Alzheimer's or any form of neurological brain disease, you actually see the physical outlay that in the body. People who have balance issues, a scoliosis, and of course the major, major thing that affects the body is stress. So stress, mental, emotional stress that we have. And again, I put the tiger there because that relates back to the parasympathetic and the sympathetic. We have the body reacts as if we were going to be eaten by a tiger, even if that it, it invents that stress in our brain. So we have the chiropractic adjustment. So I've got this diagram here and you can see that there's three triangles. So this is to really represent our body. So what we're doing is really our body is a form of three triangles trying to balance on top of one another like that. So it's an extremely delicate structure that involves very many different components, okay? So we've got the top triangle, which would represent what is your cranium, the second triangle, which is your trunk, and the third triangle is your pelvis and legs, okay? So you can see you've got the spine in the middle there. So that the idea of the spine, that's my job. 
My job is to make sure that all those joints in that spine and that alignment of that spine is completely correct so that those three triangles can balance on each other perfectly. The job, for example, of a Pilates instructor or a specific exercise instructor is to work on those muscles because as you can see, those muscles also counterbalance to help us maintain that, that, those three triangles in alignment. And the beauty about an exercise program like Pilates and Joseph Pilates always talk about, you're not just gonna be working one arm like this, you know? You're working both arms, you're working the trunk, you're working the core, you're trying to restore movement to all parts of the body, not just to the leg muscles, for example, you know? So um, I love this, this diagram because it really shows the importance of not just one form of therapy. So not just going to your chiropractor or not just doing your Pilates. It's really important that the structure is in the right alignment and that the muscles are working as they should be working. So the next one I wanted to show is how, why the importance of breaking the cycle, okay? So what I see daily in my job is uh, people come in with this, this typical forward posture, okay? The head has gone forward because they're sitting in front of a computer all day. They come in with neck pain, headaches, and these sorts of things. So they come in and I'm like really happy. Yep, we deal with this all day long. I'm not, I can really help you here. Give you a few adjustments in your neck, adjustments in your mid back, and you walk out beautifully straight and fantastic. And you're like, oh, I feel awesome. I'm like, great, see you later. But the problem is that person the next day goes back to work and falls back into that same posture. So I could do one of two things. I could adjust them again that same day and force them back up. Or I could recommend to them to go and see somebody to do Pilates or do some sort of exercise to help strengthen the muscles of the body to restore that structure again too. You know, so I really see that this is the thing between uh, exercise and some sort of structural adjustments, there's a, like a real synergy between those two. So that's what I'm saying. Adjustments and exercise to break this cycle. Yeah. Yeah. So the, I'm coming to the end here now and I have this picture of this iceberg because what I want to explain here is one, one thing that's really important. That what we feel and what is really going on are two completely different things. The top of the iceberg simply represents the symptoms that you are feeling, okay? And like I said before, 95% of the lack of motion that's happening in your spine, you are not going to feel. You only feel when the body reaches a point that it cannot adapt further, okay? And this is the typical, typical case of the person that feels completely fine and then one day bends over to pick up a piece of paper and they can't stand up again. You know, because what they're being the problem didn't start because of the paper. The problem was underneath there, underneath, underneath. The body was adapting, 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 and it said, "You know what? I can't adapt anymore." Yeah. So what we tend to do is only focus on the top of the iceberg, and even like within today's. So we're here at home because of COVID nineteen. What is the actual problem with COVID nineteen? is that it's going to create a collapse in our medical system because the medical system also is only focusing on that top bit of the iceberg. But really, all those people underneath in that larger part of the iceberg who are the healthy people looking after themselves are at no risk of any form of health issue with COVID-19. You know? So I really want to help us from this experience learn to look at the bottom of the iceberg instead of focusing at the top of the iceberg. That's perfect, Erin. Yeah, hang on, just one. So getting back to the neurology, that's it. we've got to look back at the neurology, restore the function, restore the movement, and then the body will work a lot better. But yeah, that's my talk. That that's was amazing. great. <laughs> that's really amazing. I, Thank I'm you, so guys. I'm so and happy. I really enjoyed that. Yes, me too. Well, I hope you guys learned a little bit. I hope it helps you reflect and I hope it helps your clients understand why you have to look after your body always, well, always. You, what I love about it is that you're totally reinforcing everything we're constantly telling them. This is mm -hmm. what we're always about with this whole, the, the holistic approach 
to caring for your body and you don't want it to be screaming at you no. before you actually listen to it. You want to actually always say to people, you know, you, you, you wouldn't not care for your car, you wouldn't not service it, you wouldn't not, you know, do all the right things to make sure that it, it's maintained and running well. Well, your body's exactly the same. And that was a, that was a really uh, a great perspective to come at it from. So thank you so much. And it'd be thank great. you guys. Keep up the good work. No, thank, thank you. you. And it'd be great if you could actually send us through your um, talk for next week and we'll, we'll put it on the site so people can join you. And um, we look forward to seeing you again soon. The only thing I must uh, uh, advise people that the talk for next week is in Spanish, um, where it's myself, a very well-renowned psychologist and a very well-renowned doctor. And so the three of us are going to be doing a talk about uh, changing the vision of health. That's amazing. Most of, our, most of the people on our group are, are, uh, speak Spanish. So that's Perfect. amazing. All right, darling, you have a beautiful week. Easter. Yeah, happy Easter. So yeah. Thank you for the invitation. You're welcome. We'll see you soon. Bye. Bye.